Hi everybody, Tashi here from Pixie Mommy's Reborns. Uh, so this is not a reborn related video, um, but so, so many of you have been following um, my medical, what's been going on, that I really <laughs> wanted to uh, come on and say hi to you all. So uh, you are looking at um, Little and Cakey, um, because after all, this is a reborn channel. Um, and she is currently the only baby that I am able to lift and move around right now. <laughs> so, um, but it's good because she's been keeping me real good company. So I made it back. I made it back. Um, it was, uh, there was a lot of complications. Um, to those of you just tuning in, I'll just go give a little back story no pun intended. Um, I've had a, uh, a bulging disc right on my sciatic nerve, and I've been dealing with that incredible pain since the beginning of September that was kind of increasingly getting worse. Every time I thought it couldn't possibly get any worse, it, <laughs> it was. Um, I was hanging on to see um, a specific surgeon on the 29th, uh, which I did, in fact, see. And he did, in fact, say, yes, this is needs to be taken care of immediately. Uh, however, his schedule was very booked. He handed me off to one of his associates. Long story short, this was late on a Friday. His associate kind of didn't get the full thing because I have been on um, uh, ibuprofen and uh, 800 milligrams every six hours of ibuprofen, as well as uh, gabapentin, which is a seizure medicine that they use also for nerve pain. They use it in diabetics, sort of like a generic for Lyrica, I guess, in a way. So that's how I was managing the pain. Normal people would have been on painkillers. Um, I... Um, in recovery, I will be sober 11 years this January, so I was unable to take pain medication for, um, you know, a, a, any period of time. So the surgeon had agreed to, you know, do this surgery. What I needed done just to get this disc off was less invasive than the rest of the work that I need done in my back, which that's another story, but wasn't an emergency. So my only way in was via the emergency room um, uh, to get the hospital to admit me through the emergency room. And then um, one of the surgeons there uh, from that team would operate. Uh, I tried to get in last Saturday, I believe. Yes, last Saturday. Um, and was unsuccessful because they could not or would not. The hospital was so crowded, um, the emergency room, um, they would not bring out a stretcher. And I could not get into a wheelchair or walk in at that point. Um, so we had to retreat and go home after all of that. And I decided to wait until Monday morning when I could get in touch with the surgeon's office and... Um, oh, so that they could have some contact with the hospital and say, we're sending our patient over and blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, because they were closed over the weekend. So, you know, that was a concern. So that long story short, uh, what happened Monday when I spoke to them, they told me that Dr. Gutman, that's the surgeon that did this, you know, wound up doing the surgery, actually, the neurosurgeon, would be doing surgeries. He would be in the hospital on Wednesday and to go in on Tuesday by way of the emergency room. And if I got admitted, he would operate. Okay, so we went Tuesday morning, drove out to my parents' house, called an ambulance from there because they live within the area of the hospital that I needed to go to, got in. Well, it was so unusually packed, um, for whatever the reason, 
which was still from Saturday, what we saw, how busy they were. Um, no, nobody really knew why. You could hear I spending <laughs> all of Tuesday into Wednesday morning in the emergency room, mostly on a stretcher in a hallway. Um, you hear a lot. <laughs> and, you know, you could hear the nurses, like nobody could figure out what was going on and why they were so jam packed and why they were like losing patients and had patients just parked in hallways all over the hospital. It was insane. So I was in quite a lot of pain. And um, but at a certain point, Tuesday evening, they came and said they were admitting me and that Dr. Gutman was going to do the surgery in the morning. Da, 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 da. They moved me to another part of the ER, which then I got a kind of sort of room, you know, where they put you where there's a curtain and another person, but it is inside a kind of sort of room where I spent the night. Uh, no sleep, but that's okay. All right. So Wednesday, the surgery goes to happen and happens. And I wake up out of surgery in beyond pain. <laughs> Can't even explain it. Um, just, I can't even explain it. Just really, really, really bad. Um, I actually got up, made an attempt to walk to go to the bathroom, couldn't even get back into the bed. I, it, it was just so horrific. And they were pumping me pumping me full of pain medication because at that point I said I'll accept narcotic I will accept anything and everything whatever you can do to get me out of this pain so you know shots of fentanyl after toradol after tylenol after more fentanyl after I, I have no idea they were just pumping me and pumping me and then they're looking at my back and it developed the incision under it, you know, was a big lump, you know, a hematoma was, you know, formed and they marked it with a pen and uh, within a half an hour, it was like doubled inside. It was like growing before their eyes. It was like Pinocchio's nose, this thing protruding off my back. So now they're extremely concerned and they're ordering, you know, MRI stat. Well, the MRI machines were down. Two of them they had there. It wasn't until after midnight that they got me into an MRI 45 minutes long because they had to do my lumbar and my sacrum. That's your tailbone. Wasn't a very pleasant 45 minutes, I'll tell you that. But I knew that they needed this image to find out. Was I leaking spinal fluid? Was it just blood? Was what what the story was, what they needed to do. So they took the MRI. They then got me up to a room that I was admitted for, but they were obviously waiting, waiting for the room. The hospital was so packed. Spent many more hours in uncontrolled pain. Until the morning when the surgeons came in and said, we have to take you back into the operating room and open you back up. So apparently what had happened, um, because what I, the procedure that I had done, the surgery that I had done, they take, they do not take the whole disc out. They take the bad part of the disc out. They try to leave you with as much of good disc as they can. Well, when the surgeon went in, uh, you know, they cut a they cut a piece of the bone and then they go into the disc and you know, they they clean out. <clears throat> and the what he left looked good and was sticky and looked good. What he couldn't see was behind it. And after I cl they closed me up, probably almost immediately, it re-herniated pushing f disc fragments out into my spinal canal. So that was the incredible th pain that I was feeling. 
likely probably cause the swelling because my body is now like, whoa, foreign objects here in the spinal canal could have also the combination with the Motrin and the, and the, you know, the, I mean, the ibuprofen or Motrin, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, you know, we had that going on, but their, their concern at that point was not the bleeding, the hematoma, their concern was the, the fragments, you know, and anyway, so now I am, so my body is so exhausted. My lung, I mean, I had already been intubated once, anesthetized once, opened up once, and here they are again, putting me out, intubating me, and going back in. And I was, you know, weak and it just, yeah. <laughs> um, so they put me out the second time. Did the surgery. That went well. They got out. He got out. He got out more than he got out the first time. He was confident that, you know, everything would be good. I woke up. The leg pain, the sciatic pain was gone. Was gone when I woke up. Um, uh, they, they had a hard time getting me back out of the anesthesia the second time. Um, it was... You know, when you've got, you know, seven, eight people, doctors, nurses, you know, flying around you. I remember they were not wheeling me out of the operating room. They were running, you know, running. And, you know, I kept hearing my blood pressure about my blood pressure and get my blood pressure down. I was shaking. so um, Like you could hear the the gurney shake it was just you know it was incredible and they're just you know again pumping me pumping me pumping me you know trying to get you know pain down blood pressure down you know trying to warm me up throwing you know he all kinds of heated stuff my head was all wrapped my, yeah whatever 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 um I I didn't realize it afterwards. I came to find out that they had a just in the operating room getting me to get wake up, follow commands, breathe, go pe- you know, put t- extubate me and breathe. You know, they had they had a hard time. Um, but I'm here, and I am very uh, grateful to say that um i f- feel that the um you know i'm home obviously as as you can all say boy they push you out of the hospital real fast what you know you, you got to think thur- thursday i was back in the operating room and now here i am and i was um you know pretty late last night got got in um you know, as soon as you're going to the bathroom and, and drinking and eating something, they're like, whoop, out of here. Anyway, um, I am here. I am resting. I am recuperating. I feel uh, like everything is right. Like, you know, the I, yes, I have some pain at the incision site, but to me, it feels like what, you know, normal surgical pain. Yes, I, I feel very weak. Uh, you know, it's it, you would expect that from an ordeal, but everything is working correctly. Everything is, you know, I can feel my everything. I, you know, it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm not in the uh, incredible pain that I was in. I am actually sitting, ladies. I am, you know, on the other side of the camera. You can't see me, but I am sitting. I'm sitting. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry. This I sound like I'm just dragging on here with this story, but figured every anybody that wanted to kind of hear what happened and, um. I can tell you that um, I know that all of your thoughts and your prayers were with me, and I could not possibly be more grateful, especially for what happened. Um, they were were clearly needed. Um, you know, it's funny because our 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 God, our intuition. I have a very, very good intuition. I 
had an intuition before going in for the first surgery that that it was not right, that something was wrong or going to be wrong. And, you know, I thought to myself, well, this is just normal to feel this way, anxious and scared about a surgery. But just something didn't feel like it was going to go right. And it didn't. And going under the second time, I had a feeling that it might be a rough go. Uh, I had a feeling that exactly what happened did, but that I would ultimately be okay from that surgery and the, you know, the surgery itself, the spinal surgery would be a success, so to speak. It was my, my gut, my instinct. Um, I went, when they put me out the second time, I, I just knew like something, whatever told me that I was going to have to fight to come back, to wake up, that my body was just that weak and beat up and from all the pain and that I was, it wasn't going to be easy. And the last thing that I remember, cause I kept just thinking to myself, think of my kids, think of my kids and especially uh, my son Gabriel, and that is what I was thinking of the last seconds that I remember was, you know, f- just fight, fight to come back to 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 Gabe, uh, because he he needs me, and that that's what I did. That's what I did. So I'm here. Um, I feel calm and good and I'm getting a lot of rest. Um, my hand's getting very tired holding the camera up. I really haven't been texting much or, or really any with anyone. It's hard for me. You all know I, I don't type fast to begin with. It's, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's not, I don't text like you know, most people do. I use that little stylus pen and I'm do, 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 and you know, um, to begin with my spell, like I got to think to spell and everything. And now, you know, my, my brain's going a little slow. So, uh, you know, I, I'm just, I just don't have the strength to kind of carry on to, uh, to, especially to explain all that in a text. So I thought the best thing to do would be to come on video for whoever was interested in hearing, sticking around and hearing everything that you all could hear my voice and see Precious Little and Keiki and um, hear what happened. So that is what happened. So I am beyond grateful to be back here with you ladies right now. Um, As I said, and Keiki is the only baby. I can't lift anything more than five pounds. And I did check, Renee, I did check the paperwork. And that's till my follow-up. Um, and I will be going to get the stitches out next week. I have to call Monday morning to get the appointment, but sometime next week I'll be in the surgeon's office. They'll take the stitches out. The first surgery did not have stitches on the outside. It had two layers inside, but then it was sealed with like that glue and that clear. Um, however, the second one, this one is dressed because they went in the same incision. So, you know, this one is dressed and has stitches on the outside. Um, so, you know, next week I should be cleared to, to lift, you know, I won't be able to do any, obviously heavy lifting and bending and stuff like that, like common sense, but I should be able to, after that, lift my other babies because everybody's over five pounds, you know, so, and Keiki, I figured I'm not straining myself at all. I'll tell you last night when I lifted her to bring her into the bed with me, she felt like five tons. She felt so heavy. And today I just, I, you know, she was in the bassinet. I moved her back over and she felt light to me again, like she normally does. So my strength is coming back. I can feel that. And uh, I heal good. Like look at my hands that look at that little spot. That's where one IV site was. And it was pretty ugly and bruised looking. And I can't even see. It's the one, well, I have freckles, but it's the red one there, anyway. And the other hand, you can see the dot for that one, the scab kind of for that one. And then there's two sites on either arm. I think they have four access sites going on me. Um, And they're not all, you know, 
brute they were, but they're not even anymore. So clearly my body is going ahead and healing up. Um, I got a major fat lip. I came out of the first surgery with a fat lip and they said, oh, it's the tape from the intubation tube. Sometimes when they rip it off, I guess. And I, I was, I, it, through all that, I still had my sense of humor. I, it beat me up in there. And um, then the second time, it got, <laughs> got even fatter. So, got a fat lip. And, yeah, that's about it. I can't shower till Sunday. So, I'm like, you know. Um, I'm sure I could wash my hair at the sink, but. I'm not even ready to bend far enough to have my head. Like, I'm not there yet. I'm still a little not steady on my feet. And I mean, I'm steady on my feet, but I'm I'm not ready to kind of have my head upside down in the sink and be trying to. So it just is what it is. And uh, that's it. That's it. So um, I... You know, I certainly will be coming on to read everyone's comments. I am sure I will not be able to answer, but I will be reading them. Uh, I'll be back in the swing as quickly as possible. I, I certainly miss you all. Um, I have thought about you all um, through this. Uh, you know, everyone here is very important to me. Um, and, you know, and of course, my dear friends and you know who you are and it was very difficult my husband was half in the dark in this in a certain aspect um because he was here with gabriel i had my mom there and my daughter destiny my 16 year old stayed by my bedside and stayed the you know the whole time um you know, my husband was here with my son, and I, I was happy with with having my mom up there as my, quote, next of kin to make decisions and to advocate for me. And um, my husband was so disheveled. You know, I'm sure this was all very upsetting, and he's not great with that kind of stuff. And when he's under pressure, he was even worse. And I could not imagine have, ha, putting decisions or anything in his hands in the state that he was in. Um, you know, I didn't quite realize we've never had something that serious that, you know, I didn't quite realize it was, you know, whatever, but I, I realized what was happening. And I said, Oh, boy. So I kind of just said, No, no, I'll feel so much better just to know you're there with Gabe. And, you know, please do that. And it keeps off my mind. And I said, you know, look, my, you know, I told my mom, unless I'm freaking dead, please just don't, you know, just, I, I felt bad. But I, I just I, I, you know, I had to have somebody that has a had a clear head and, you know, it was very serious. Um, so, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, I don't think anybody was really informed that I had to go in for the second surgery and so on and so forth. But honestly, it would have just made everyone worried and scared. And I'm just so happy to be here and just say it's done. It's over with. I'm back. I'm okay. Uh, you know, because everyone here is, is far away. I knew, knew you all were praying, you know, that was a given. So there was nothing else to do. So I'm just very happy that I didn't have to worry everyone and that I'm, and I'm back and I'm okay. And I am one hell of a tough cookie. So I am gonna, you know, just get through this recovery and I'm just so happy to be here. I'm just really so happy to be here. Yeah, they saw that MRI. They said, oh, boy, you have disczilla back there. <laughs> I couldn't believe the disc on the nerve. How, oh, yeah, yeah. They said, how many days ago was this MRI? <laughs> it's the days. He said, that was like before Halloween. They were like, did a double take. You were walking around like this? <laughs> take the anesthesiologist. And he, he was, um... 
he was, I don't know if he was Chinese, he was Asian. So he was like with the accent and he's like, you walk around like this <laughs> for a month? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was. <laughs> he's like, you got this. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> he's so funny. Um, yeah, so they were like, oh my gosh. But y'all know what I was go, why I was hanging on and waiting for the surgeon and whatever. And <laughs> so, you know, look, you always have to find the humor in things. Um, there was some very, very amazing doctors and nurses, uh, everyone there. I mean, the ER is the ER, and they were very overworked. So, you know, I don't really count that. But everyone that cared for me uh, during my stay there was uh, amazing people, good people, kind, compassionate, uh, and just went above and beyond. And I will always be grateful and, uh, you know, remember there was a lot of people that took care of me. I'm mean, going into the operating room the second time. It was a very large operating room. And there must have been 15, 16 people in there. Uh, you know, it was a, a lot, a lot. Um, and everybody was just, you know, so caring and made you feel so good that, you that you were going to be okay and that they were going to be there and take care of you and that they would be there the whole time and da 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 you know just everything and you know and and from even just being in the room and the ladies that come in and that they they assist the nurses and they make sure you got pillows and you're comfortable and this and that and they all were just absolutely amazing, uh, and I, I'm just so grateful. I was worried going in. I think, June, I think I was telling you I was so worried going in because I've had experiences in the emergency room, um, you know, throughout my years of sobriety, and um, where you're kind of not treated very nicely as a recovering, you know, addict, alcoholic, um, you know, I've been in that position and I was very, very worried that I was gonna, you know, run into that. And I have to say that, thank God. And, you know, I'm sure all your prayers for that help too, but I was treated with absolutely respect. I, 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 I didn't even think about it. I wasn't feeling like I was any different of a patient than anyone else. And that them dealing with how to medicate me and all of that was, um, uh, you know, just part of my medical, you know, and, and that's it and nothing, absolutely nothing. And they went way, way above and beyond to, you know, honor my wishes and make me comfortable. And, and you know, and when I said, uh, okay, please just do whatever, they certainly did whatever. And uh, it was no, you know, nobody questioned me, nobody said it was, it was, I was treated, you know, very well. Um, so I, I didn't run into any, any issues with that. You know, I guess when uh, something's really that serious, you know, people are not gonna, you know, whatever, whatever it was, but it was, it was all good in that respect. Um, so, all right, as usual, I rambled on almost a half hour. I can't believe I'm holding the phone steady. I'm going in, switching back and forth to each hand. Um, but that's it. And, um, uh, I'm going to see if I could hop on Instagram a little bit. Uh, I took some lovely pictures before I left that I planned to, in, you know, have something to do and post them during my stay in the hospital while I was recouping. And of course, that, you know, I was too, too sick to be able to do that. I may be able to do that this evening. I have to go check Hi Jameson's mommy. Um, uh, you know, Jameson went home. Um, I, I'm assuming he got there. I'm sure I would have heard from, you know, I, I'm sure word would have came down to me had something been wrong and he didn't arrive. So I'm assuming he's there and his mommy's very happy to have him in her arms. And, uh, so I want to go, uh, check on, check on him and check, check on that. And, uh, yeah, that's it. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for hanging in there with me. Thanks for praying with me. And thanks for uh, sticking it out with me. All right, everyone. Until next time.
God bless.